Hi everybody, it's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog again. Thank you very much for tuning in to my second video. Thank you to everyone who watched my first, all the nice comments you said on Twitter and below. I really appreciate it. Thank you all everyone that subscribed. I really appreciate that too. I thought what I would do for my second video is kind of a book haul. Well, it's not kind of a book haul. It's a book haul. Um, focusing on the books I bought before I started my blog in January and February of this year. Um, to kind of give you an idea of what I like to purchase, what I've been picking up, and what's on my TBR. Um, and I'm going to break it into two videos. And the reason is I went book crazy in January and February. I probably bought almost 40 books. So um, I'm going to just actually do two book, uh, hauls of 10, kind of weeding out um, the ones that I really want to read or want to talk about with you guys. So hopefully you'll like that. I thought I would start with a book that's kind of popped up a little bit a lot for me lately, and that is A Little Bit A Lot For Me Lately. Does that make sense? That's Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. I actually bought this book on the recommendation of my friend Curtis, who sometimes just texts me, have you heard of this book? And then I wind up putting it on a list and I always wind up buying it. I was going to the bookstore the next day and I purchased it and then I forgot that I had bought it. And then I was watching Mercedes' channel and I'll link her below. I'll probably link her video where she talks about this book as her hope of being on the Bailey's long list. It didn't make it, but it does, didn't make me want to read it any less. So, what do I know about Idaho? It's probably all I want to know. It's very little. I do know that there's a family, and they go into the woods together, parents and two children, and there's an incident with an axe. Something happens, and it kind of affects them. I know that the father gets remarried and the new wife is really trying to figure out what happened to the first wife and what this incident was and how it affected the family. I think that sounds really interesting. Um, Mercedes said that it's not so much about the incident, but it's a lot about what happened after the incident, which I think is interesting as well. Um, so I think I'm really excited to read this book. It's probably coming up pretty soon. Um, that's Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. The next book I'm not going to talk about a whole lot, just wanted to bring it up because I think everybody in America has bought this book. I know it's 1984 by George Orwell. It's got a white cover, so white light just makes that real bright. Um, I actually have never read this book. I have read a ton of George Orwell's nonfiction, and I have read Animal Farm like six times in college, <laughs> twice after college, I want to say. So um, I've read that a bunch of times. So I'm actually excited to get to this. I don't know when I will, but I figured I would join in the group that was purchasing it. Um, it's got a lot of play right now in America and a lot of warning signs. So I picked it up, not much to say about it. That's 1984 by George Orwell. The next book I'm gonna talk about is um, Human Acts by Han King. Um, this is a really pretty cover, don't you think? I think it's a really pretty cover. Um, weird, but pretty. Um, I read Han King's first book that was put out here, The Vegetarian. It won the Man Booker International Prize last year. I loved it. It's the weirdest book about a woman who becomes a vegetarian and basically goes insane. And um, how it affects her family, her choice to go vegetarian. So I really, really liked it. It was in my top ten favorite books of last year. This book I don't know a whole lot about because I just bought it because of her in this line. In the midst of a violent student uprising in South Korea, a young boy named Dong Ho is shockingly killed. That's all it says. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's interesting that she's going to build a whole book about it. Um, I know that it focuses on how that faith, that murder affects a bunch of different people from his friend, from other people that are reporting on it. I think that's going to be really interesting. I really love The Vegetarian, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to love this book. That's Human Acts by Han King. The next book I'm going to talk about is um, called Moonlight. It's by um, Michael Chopin, or Chapin, or Chopin. I don't know how to say his last name. That's awful, because I really like him. Um, the Adventures of Cavalier and Clay, which won him the Pulitzer Prize here in America, is actually one of my favorite, probably my top 10 favorite books. Um, I really, really like that book. What I know about this book is that it's kind of like narrative nonfiction slash fiction. It's that he sits down and has conversations with his grandfather that kind of influence the narrative, and it's more like him interviewing his grandfather 
and using fiction to fill in the blanks. Um, I actually started this a while ago, but I started it too close to the end of the new year and I knew I wouldn't finish it in time. And like a few of my favorite book two people, I like to end a book at the end of the year and start a new one on the first day. I knew I wouldn't be able to do it. I was really enjoying it. Um, I really like Michael um, Chapon's uh, writing style. I find it very, very entertaining. So I'm excited to read this book. That's Moon Glow. I called it the wrong name. Moonlight is the name of a movie. <laughs> Which I also really loved and I recommend you all go see. But Moon Glow is the book I'm talking about. So I hope that doesn't uh, put you off this book. Um, this is Moon Glow by Michael Chabon. Who I still can't say the last name. Thanks. <laughs> the next book. Do you guys have those books that you walk by and you almost buy like ten times? And you look at it every time you go to the store and you're like, you know what, I've got to buy that book. And then you never buy that book? Well, I finally bought that book in January. It is The Slow Waltz of Turtles by Catherine, how do you say her last name, Pancole? Um, I love this cover. I also love turtles. They're my favorite animal. I have a turtle tattoo on my arm. Um, I went swimming in Aruba and a sea turtle came up and they've kind of have always been in present in my life ever since. And then it has a dog with a turtle on it. I mean, come on. I don't even really need to know what it's about. But I'm gonna tell you what it's about because I think it sounds fascinating. 40-something mother of two, Josephine Cortez is at a crossroads. She has just moved to, to a posh new apartment in Paris. After the success of a historical novel, she goes for it, wrote for her sister. Iris, still struggling with her divorce, the results of her husband running off to Kenya to start a crocodile farm with his mistress, she is entangled in Iris's messy lie. And if that's not enough, people have started turning up dead in her neighborhood. So I think that sounds fun. I think the idea of a crocodile farm, a mistress in Kenya sounds fun. I love the cover. I love the title. So um, I finally bought it. So I will read it and I will tell you everything about it once I've done it. That is uh, The Slow Waltz of Turtles by Catherine, Catherine Pancole. The next book I bought because I was jealous. Um, Simon over at Savage Reads has done an interview with the author, Hannah Kent, um, for her new book, The Good People. Um, the Good People is not available in America yet. So that is the problem with watching booktube videos from people who are in the UK. They have a lot of books that they talk about that you go to buy and they're not available. That happened to me with Mercedes. She talked and raved about the title zone by Sarah Moss. I went to the bookstore and the guy actually thought I was making it up. So what did I do regarding Hannah Kent and The Good People? I did the next best thing because I had never read it and I went and bought her first book, Burial Rights. Um, she was so endearing on Simon's interview of her and I'll link that interview below. I highly recommend just watching her. I want to be her friend. Um, was super jealous that Simon got to spend time with her. Um, in this book, I think just as summed up in this brief little um, section at the top where it says charged with the brutal murder of two men Agnes a last name I won't even try to pronounce has been removed to her homeland's farthest reaches to an isolated farm in northern Iceland to await execution I think that sounds so interesting Simon has raved about this book I want to say Lauren at um Lauren in the books has raved about this book was talking about the good people my British friends stop talking about books I can't get. I really want the good people, Simon. So I'm really excited to read this book and uh, see what all the fuss is about. I think I'm gonna love it. And I think if you haven't read anything by Hannah Kent, pick this one up. Why not go into her backlist before a new book comes out in a few months? Um, the next book I bought mainly from the cover and I'm gonna bring it in close because come on people, look at that cover. It's gorgeous. Don't judge a book by its cover. Judge this book by its cover. It's beautiful. And it's called Before the Feast by um, Sasha Saza Stanzik, and it's been translated by Athena Bell. Um, I just love the idea of it. It's kind of got a fairy tale vibe per the back of it. It says, it's, it's the evening before the feast in the village of Furstenfeld, population an odd number. The village is asleep, except for the ferryman. He's dead, 
and Mrs. Krantz, the night-blind painter who wants to depict her village for the first time at night. A bell ringer and his apprentice want to ring bells. There's only one problem. The bells have gone. A vixen is looking for eggs for her young. And Mr. Schramm is discovering more reasons to quit life than to quit smoking. I think it sounds funny. I think it, I like the fairy tale aspect of it. I love the cover and even the back. Look at the back here. Come on. Um... I haven't even really looked at a book. I know it's on a bunch of people's TBRs, so I'm really excited about it. I know Simon has it. I know Thomas over at Hogglestock.com has it. Um, I really want to read it. It's called Before the Feast, and I still can't stop looking at that cover. I can't. Okay, three more books, and then I promise we're through. I picked up this book by Penelope Lively. It's old. Um, it's way backlisted. Moon Tiger, because of an blog post that Thomas had written on his blog about a biography he had written, read of Penelope Lively. And I think another one of my friends, maybe Jana had read something by her. Hi, Jana. I think it was you. You had talked about it on Goodreads. Yep, I'm pretty sure it was you. So I figured I'd never read Penelope Lively. This book had won the Booker Prize. So I figured I was at the bookstore. I would pick it up. Um, all, I love books about books. Did I say that in my first video? I love books about authors. I know a lot of people have problems with that. But this book is about Claudia Hampton, who is a best-selling author. And she's elderly and she's alone in London in, hosp in the hospital. Um, and it kind of is about her memories of her life um, and the writing, her writing of the history of the world. Um, but that's her goal. And instead, it's really the book that she writes is her history and her life as a strong, independent woman. I'm totally stealing that from the back um, with its often contentious relationships with family and friends. So I think that sounds really good. I don't love this cover. I have to be honest with you. I think it looks really old fashioned, but I think the book sounds really good. And I think that um, anything from Thomas, I usually tend to like. Him and I are both huge Barbara Prim fans and Mae Sarton fans. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about him in my next video. I'm going to talk about some of my reading influences. But um, this is Penelope Lively, Moon Tiger. I think it's good to go back in time sometimes and read things that have won awards, and I'm going to pick this one up soon. The next book is um, Mothering Sunday by Graham Swift, and this book was just nominated for the Walter Scott Prize. Um, for He's on the long list, actually, for um, historical fiction. It's not very long, which I appreciate, um, and... I have never read anything by Graham Swift, but everyone I know had said that this was like the most underrated book last year, that no one was reading, and they were recommending that everyone read it. So I thought, okay, well, I'll pick it up while I'm at the bookstore. I bought this at Bookshop Santa Cruz, which is my favorite independent bookstore in the area. I say that, but I have a few, so we'll say that one today. Um, it says on the back, on an unseasonably warm day in the spring of 1924, 22-year-old Jane Fairchild, a maid at the English country house, meets with her secret lover, the young heir of the neighboring estate. He is about to be married to a woman more befitting his social status, and the time has come to end the affair. But events unfold in a way Jane could never have predicted. So that sounds really good, I think. Kind of almost has a little bit of a Downton Abbey-esque thing, which I hope it doesn't go too much in because I'm not a huge fan. Um, but I really like it. I love that NPR has a quote on the back and Kazuo Ishiguro, who is absolutely one of my favorite writers. So I think all of that going for it, it's definitely something that I'm going to read. That is Mothering Sunday by Graham Swift. Um, the last book I'm going to talk about I bought solely because of my online book club. I know I talked about um, a, a Gentleman in Moscow last time. At the end of that, we always go over what we're reading and we talk about it. And someone had just read Ann Patchett's latest book. I think it's called Commonwealth. I want to say it's Emily over at Book Cougars. Book Cougars. She has a podcast. I'll link their podcast below. Um, I highly recommend listening to her and Chris talk. Their podcasts are usually about an hour and they crack me up and they talk about all sorts of books I've never heard of and some stuff I have. I never read, read Ann Patchett, 
Um, but I had talked about the fact that I've had Belcanto on my shelf for years and it's never really done anything for me. So they recommended that I try Run as the follow-up. They say that all of her books are very different. So I went and I bought it at my local used bookstore, which is recycled bookstore, which I love. I go there and I can spend hours whenever I need some quiet. Um, and this one just says, since their mother's death, Tip, I love that there's a character named Tip. I bet it's a guy. And Teddy Doyle have been raised by their loving, possessive, and ambitious father. As a former mayor of Boston, Bernard Doyle wants to see his son see, told you, sons in politics, a dream the boys have never shared. But when an argument in blinding New England source snowstorm inadvertently causes an accident and that involves a stranger and her child, all Bernard's cares about is his ability to keep his children, all his children, safe. Well, all his children leads me to believe that there's something connected. Let's go. I mean, come on. That couldn't be a more leading blurb. Um, but I'm excited because I really want to read Ann Patchett because everyone says she's phenomenal. And I guess maybe just Belcanto wasn't for me. So I really wanted, I'm going to grab a drink real quick. That was my face real close. Sorry. So I'm glad I picked it up. It uh, made it into my TBR. And I'm really excited about it. Hopefully, um, it will be my sort of gateway drug into Ann Patchett's reading. So, that is 10 books from me that I bought in January and February of 2017. I hope you liked it. Please tell me if you've read any of them. I know that some of you have. I'd love to hear what you think. Place the comments below. I'll try to respond to everybody. Um, I hope some of them sound interesting to you and you pick them up. Um, I will link um, below every book to an independent bookstore that I love across America where you can go and purchase the books if you like. I'll highlight one per um, podcast so that you guys, um, I say podcast, I should say blog, I apologize. Um, and uh, so you guys can go purchase them if you like, supporting a local uh, podcast uh, bookstore. And I hope you enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys in a couple days. Thank you very much for tuning in. Bye.